desirable skill sets <laughs> in informatics. And before you answer that question, um, you know, give an example of a skill set or a bias or maybe misconception that you thought of before you got into informatics of what informatics people would be like. Just an example. Well, you don't need to know any programming. <laughs> there you go. What, what? Do you think it'll help? Um, for maybe? certain applications, so people like Evan, who can look at code and write SQL, um, you know, his job is primarily reporting. So it would help in certain extents, but you do not need to know um, programming. Um, you are limited by the tools that you have, given the electronic health records you're on, so whatever tools that Epic gives you, Server gives you, but you don't need to know programming. But okay. it's super helpful if you know how to mine data in tools by itself. If you cannot pivot table or VLOOKUP, you will not succeed <laughs> as an informatics pharmacist. So that is the first prerequisite of being an informatics pharmacist. And Sam, who was in interviewed at my previous institution, knows how how strongly some organizations take that. Uh, it's no joke. And I think it's something that we actually joke about a lot of times. Like, how many times in your undergrad CV you had knowledge or uh, competencies and you put Excel in there? No, you don't know Excel. Uh, honestly, it, it takes a lot of uh, work and actually individual study to really say that you have a decent understanding of Excel. Even me, I'm nowhere to be or where I want to be. But it's definitely a great skill to have in informatics. Mm -hmm. I think there are a couple of thresholds too, you know? Yeah. Of Excel understanding. But VLOOKUP is like the first one for informatics. After that, you can do more. Like some people came in filter. Like they don't know how to filter. And that's why you, they don't make very successful <laughs> informatics pharmacists. But, but you know what's or interesting? Clear filters. Filter. Or have all the filters filter. on the, all the roles that are still active. Right, but, but your experience, like working with other informatics individuals, how many of them actually are adept or very proficient in Excel? And they still have you know great positions in there, but still great informatics. I think mostly everyone can at least understand how to navigate in Excel. They might not be the most efficient. What does navigate mean? <laughs> like clicking the Turn on, open, close. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe that's the minimum standard. And to me, that's a high expectation. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> well, I think for a lot of people who got into an informatical, uh, not traditionally, you know, learned it, learned yeah. on the job, they may not have a core understanding of some of those things that we fill with a corporate curriculum like I know some people that don't want to do a pivot table, you know, but they're great at other things. So it really just depends on how you got into your, your position and what's your role. What's your role is I think the most important question. Yeah. And going back to it, you don't need to know programming. I don't expect you to be able to write macros, but you should be able to to save and update and then um, upload upload a file. So I guess I have pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> How to save an Excel? Can you can you check it out? Can you save? <laughs> can you give me the information? <laughs> okay. So what I mean, so what do you, what do you guys think about then on desirable skills? Just give me one or two of desirable skills you think every informatic, regardless of role, that we would want. I think the two biggest for me are communication and project management. Mm. Okay. Um, experience, like, like experience, uh, experience, like hospital experience. So just, okay. If you're gonna work in a hospital, I want you to have hospital experience. If you're in from Max Wilson, the outpatient side, I want you to have that experience. It's kind of hard for you to be working on the back of something when you don't know how it works. Yeah. I actually, I actually agree with that a lot. I, I think the number one requirement is really operational experience and frontline experience as a pharmacist. You know, I, I think we can sit back in kind of an ivory tower as informatics pharmacists and dictate practice, but you know, until you really know how it works on the front end, how rounds work, how pharmacy um, operations work, you can't really make a great informatics pharmacist. So I do agree completely with that. Experience operation. <laughs> it's rare. That is a rare trait right there. I did train you, so you may have learned something eventually. <laughs> So, elaborate on communication. I'm just kind of curious what you guys think too. Why do you think communication is important? Because I personally think if I were, were to say what's a misconception is that informatics pharmacists sit behind a desk and don't talk to anyone and sit there and take away. 
code yeah. or whatever. But why is communication important? It, it, it is. It's a common misconception. And because of that, I think, at least, especially going into it myself, was I am a trained pharmacist. I need to be able to communicate with my end users. My end users are going to be also uh, my fellow clinicians. And so if I can't talk to them, and I can't talk their language, with the experience and understanding the med use process, then pretty much unlimited with, with what I can really do for them. It kind of like just reminds me why we even have our job, you know. We can't have the classic IT person do our job because they don't understand, they don't have that experience, they don't know how to communicate. And so sometimes we serve as that conduit between IT and the clinical practice because we have that that knowledge base. We are able to communicate with both sides. So important. I mean, we talked about how we are all communicating different ways. You have face to face meetings, I have remote meetings. And so, if I can't communicate thoroughly on a phone or in a video conference, then I mean, we're not being productive. So, we have to make the best of our time and make sure that we're pushing initiatives forward. Yeah, I think communication is important, not, not just being a conduit between IT and, and clinical practice, but really able to break down concepts that, you know, in terms of configuration options and whatnot, to a level that the end users understand. Um, oftentimes, you know, we might have a recommendation, but we ultimately need the end users to tell us what they would want. And for us to articulate those options in a way that, that they can accurately understand and correctly configure the, the, the system is really important. And sometimes these concepts are hard to break down. So like telling someone how dispense logic works um, in Epic is really hard for someone who doesn't understand or has been trained in Epic and does not understand dispense logic. And taking those concepts and making them make sense to end users is I think one of the aspects of communication that's important. I'll add to that aside from you know everything you guys said, which I completely agree, is that communication is also important because in your communication, you should have the ability to persuade and influence. You know, many times you're trying to converge decisions and you may want to influence uh, depending on what those decisions uh, might entail. And in addition, being able to facilitate meetings, I think that's really important because you have people that just talk and talk <laughs> so much, but you as an individual that's presenting something or presenting an idea, you have to be able to facilitate the meeting so it's an effective, efficient meeting. Uh, you have to have agendas, you no know, basic things like that. But I think, you know, communicating, that's also email communication, visual communication, things like that. I think that's really important too. Um, okay, I think that's kind of it. This is a, this is a pretty good length video. <laughs> Everyone start copying me, all right guys? <laughs> if you guys have questions for Kareem, Sam, or Dennis, uh, we'll post their LinkedIn's or emails, I don't know what you guys want. Whatever, you, whatever they want. All right guys, until next time. All right. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe, and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys. <laughs>